Placing phosphorus at depth is common practice in Queensland where it has been found to improve returns for goers. However, the practice is less common in the southern region, particularly South Australia, where phosphorus is normally placed at a shallower depth around the seed of planting. A team of researchers in South Australia have been investigating why this is the case as part of a wider GRDC investment led by the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. So the northern system is quite different from the southern system uh, in that in the period of time when the crops have the highest demand for pea, uh, the soil is drying down and this means that that deeper layer um, is wetter than the surface layer which um, becomes quite dry during the period of peak phosphorus requirement. The other thing that's happening in northern systems is they're running down for phosphorus fertility uh, relative to what they were in the past. Um, and we think these two things have uh, driven what they see in terms of uh, crops responding well to deep placement of phosphorus fertiliser. One of the main sites of the South Australian research has been at Brinkworth in the state's mid-north. Here, the team has been assessing the performance of what Nigel Wilhelm calls the Queensland package. This is placing most of the phosphorus at depth and some with the seed. They've been comparing that to the industry standard in South Australia where all the phosphorus is placed near the seed. The key findings from these trials is that the industry standard of placing phosphorus with the seed continues to perform well. So we're finding where we apply the same rate of phosphorus in the industry way and compare that with splitting it between a little bit with the seed and placing the rest of it deep we're not getting the same crop as we do with the industry standard. Uh, with these trials, we go to a site that's quite phosphorus deficient, because if you're testing the relative effectiveness of fertilizers, you need a site where the crop will respond strongly to that fertilizer, so you can actually tease apart the effectiveness of those different strategies. So you can see here on my left, we've got a plot which has had little or no phosphorus for the last four years compared to on my right, where this has had a fresh application of quite a high rate of phosphorus in and around the seed, and it's doing a much better job than that which hasn't had the phosphorus. So it's a major constraint on production, um, but we find, so this is a high rate of phosphorus near the seed. If we put the phosphorus deeper in the profile, we find the crop just struggles to perform as well as the one on my right hand side. So for the same rates, we're getting a better crop with that phosphorus placed shallower. Uh, we've had different packages or strategies for applying this stuff, so we recognise that if this were a commercial reality, there'd be some phosphorus going out with the seed and the majority going below. So we've tried that in multiple combinations here, but we're still finding the best performer is the current industry standard. Sites were chosen based on their phosphorus levels, with deficient sites favoured to make responses more visible. The Brinkworth site is one of four within the same paddock. It goes from a low NDVI, high pH moderate calcareous soil in one area to neutral to acidic soil just 200 metres away with good phosphorus reserves. According to Sean Mason, it is these kinds of factors which are conducive to broader uptake of variable rate application. In terms of maximising profits from phosphorus nutrition, I really think we can um, definitely improve that uptake of, of variable rate P at a paddock level. Um, by factoring in definitely your soil type um, and obviously crop uh, removal and therefore replacement, but that soil type is, is really key. Another background part of this work and what was identified in Queensland was down here in South Australia, um, a lot of our soil types are depleted in phosphorus um, in what we call the subsurface, so sampling protocols is 0 to 10, but as, as soon as we go below 10, uh, we're running into very low available P measures, for example, below 10 Colwell P. So that's on the back of very low inherent levels already, but the crop is obviously accessing um, P if there is any down there as well. So um, we are depleted down there. So one of the aims of this project was if we fulfilled that sort of depletion and deficiency, um, can we get an overall maximi maximisation of, of crop uptake and then a benefit into, into yield. Additional research happening alongside this project is supporting the field work through developing some modelling. This research, led by Kirsten Verberg at CSIRO, is looking to predict which combinations of climate and soil type are most likely to lead to the typical Queensland scenario of a drying soil surface on top of a wetter subsurface when the crop requires the most phosphorus. So Kirsten's mapped up across that entire region all the combinations of climates and soil types and looked at 
how often we might expect those conditions um, at that time when the crop has a high demand for phosphorus. And I guess what's been quite surprising is it's not that frequent uh, where we get that combination of conditions. And this may support some of the observations that we're making in the field experiments. Two PhD students are conducting research to complement the project. Will Tucker from the University of Adelaide is looking at the difference in soil chemistry between the surface and subsurface layers and whether that influences the likelihood of a phosphorus response depending on where it is placed. What he's found is that across the sites where we've had our field experiments there is perhaps less of a contrast in um, phosphorus availability driven by the phosphorus buffering index or the ability of that soil to retain phosphorus added as fertiliser than we initially expected. So there's only been a few examples where there's been a very strong contrast in pH or texture that has meant that there is a big difference in um, how much of the phosphorus that we add we might expect to come back to the plant in the chemical sense. We also have Olivia Brunton doing her PhD with Charles Sturt University and she's exploring the um, effect of crop species on the response to placement of phosphorus fertiliser. Her key finding isn't so much about the crop species but it's about the cost of chasing phosphorus when it's placed deeper. So if you have adequate phosphorus near the surface um, then the crop will take that up because it has a lower energy cost, it's not having to work as hard to get that phosphorus. The only situation where we see any kind of positive response in terms of the root biomass is when the surface is very deficient for phosphorus and there's ample supply of phosphorus deeper in the profile. That's when the roots will proliferate deeper and um, benefit.